Hi, it's Alex here and welcome back to my channel. We're here to talk about sewing. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I was last on here and I have made a couple of things and I, I will get onto that. Uh, but I thought it was just time to have a bit of a catch up, uh, a bit of a chat. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the lovely comments on my last vlog. Um, certainly with regard to, well, both things, but the cape. Um, I've got to be honest, I haven't worn it out of the house. I've tried it on a couple of thing, a couple of times thinking it might go with what I was wearing, but it feels a bit costumey, it feels a bit fancy dress. So I'll keep trying. I, I still think if it, if we get some snow, some, a proper downpour of snow, um, it might be great for that. But at the moment, yeah, I think it, it might be one of those. Um, so, you know, we'll see. And I'm afraid I'm not wearing anything me made today. It is absolutely freezing outside. I got caught in the hail walking the dogs this morning. So I'm going for warm and cosy. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, actually, it was a Christmas present from my husband, uh, but it's lovely and warm. So I've cheated. Um, I just thought a uh, couple of things I thought I'd mention before I get onto what I've made. Um, one is that I mentioned on, it might have been in December, that I'd uh, placed an order with the Sewing Quarter, um, who have now closed down. They were um, a, a sewing channel, uh, like a sewing shopping channel, and they were selling all their patterns off, at, at, well, not just patterns, fabric, and all sorts of bits and pieces, um, really, really cheap prices. And I'd placed an order for a load of patterns from the assembly line, and... Um, I knew it was going to take a while for them to arrive, but I got an email about a week or 10 days ago saying that my order had been cancelled. And I kept meaning to check. I've just checked this morning. I've not had a refund. So, um, yeah, I shall email them. I mean, hopefully they're a legitimate business and my money will come through. I think I spent about £30, which was on a gazillion patterns. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I did say at the time I wasn't 100% sure what might happen there was an element of risk when you know somebody's uh, closing down but anyway fingers crossed that will come up come back i'm a bit disappointed really because there were a lot of patterns from the assembly line and uh, i really really love their patterns so. so no news i'm afraid on my camera it's been sent off uh, to the insurers to be inspected i'm really hoping that they will um, opt to not repair it to uh, replace it because if they repair it Apparently, it's, uh, the repair's only guaranteed for 90 days, which is a bit galling because I specifically bought it from John Lewis, uh, who offer a two-year guarantee on all their electrical items. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. It's been about 10 days since it's been gone. So, yeah, I'll wait to hear. Um, but, I, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. I notice that when I'm on this camera, it shows that I've got fewer wrinkles. So, you know, that's a plus. Um, the other thing I thought I would share with you is that um, Alexa Chung has a YouTube channel. I don't know if you follow her or not, I don't know if you like her or not, um, but at the moment her latest two um, videos have been behind the scenes at the Dior Haute Couture um, show. Um, and in the first one she goes to the atelier and talks to all the staff working there. Um, staff that doesn't sound right they're, they're you know fantastically talented people anyway it's really really interesting it's quite lovely to watch um i really enjoyed it and then the second part is the show itself so um yeah i'll link it below and you might want to go and have a look at that because i yeah it's fabulous so i talked a little bit in my uh, last video about trying to make my wardrobe more coordinated and a uh, few people mentioned that Tomcat Stitchery, who has a channel here on YouTube, uh, she's called Whitney, that she is currently doing something about having a, a coordinated wardrobe, which is about sewing in modules. And I've had a look at her blog. It looks really interesting. Um, and when I've got a little bit less on my plate, I am probably going to have a little um, play with that as a concept. But... I've got quite a lot on my mind at the moment because I'm busy organising this uh, Manchester Sewing Bee Meetup, which is now in 10 days, um, which is actually taking up quite a lot of time, but I'm really excited about. And I have to say, and I'll be quick because obviously 
a lot of you won't be coming but it's going to be really good and uh, I have been absolutely overwhelmed by the number of sponsors we've had and um, some just phenomenal prizes that have been donated by people and um, it's the first time we will have done this and we are only 36 people although I have to tell you there are 32 on the waiting list um, and I was worried nobody would want to come um, anyway so given that you know we don't have the huge numbers of some of the meetups um, yeah people have been incredibly incredibly generous um, I think the cause, the Prevent Breast Cancer charity, is um, something that uh, calls to quite a lot of people because um, it affects all of us one way or another, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, when I've got a little bit less on my plate, I will go and have a look at her module concept. But in the meantime, I'm sticking to my kind of quick and easy version of just trying to look at what I've made and what I've got that goes with it and if there are any holes in my wardrobe. So in December I made a um, bias cut skirt using the Tsuti patterns, I think it's called EV skirt pattern, um, which I made in a sort of pale lilac-y satin fabric. And my intention with that skirt was to make it um, something I could wear every day. You tend to think with anything with a bit of shine or that's satiny that it's sort of for going out or evenings only and I my plan was to wear it with a jumper and a big old pair of boots which to be honest is my plan for most things in the winter so I had made a um, seamwork Astoria jumper in some faux angora which I think was in a colour that's supposed to be that's called denim but it is more like a grey than a blue I was really happy with it the first time I've ever made a jumper that's fitted um, but having lost a little bit of weight I was feeling a little bit more confident about wearing something fitted and cropped um, I wasn't sure how I'd get on with it but actually I found myself to be wearing it a lot so um, I thought I would make another jumper to go with that same skirt that would also go with the infamous brown ginger jeans and anything else that I might have and a little while ago I had a mini colour analysis oh, analysis, analysis uh, session um, because there's a lady called Boz she's also here on YouTube but she's just had a baby so she's been a bit absent for a while uh, she has an online fabric shop called Fabric Magpie she's based in north of Manchester and she had a pop-up shop and as part of that she invited uh, a stylist to come along and do some mini colour analysis sessions with people if they wanted it. So I did that and I also ordered from her some colour swatches and as part of that it kind of introduced me to the idea of wearing some colours that I have um, kind of avoided or just not worn and one of those was purple but I thought lilac and purple together would look really good I quite like doing that you know you have uh, shades of the same colour family in one outfit I, I like how that looks um, so I had a good hunt around for some purple sweat in it and unfortunately I just couldn't find anything that was either yeah that I liked the look of or was the right colour so I settled for a compromise and I ordered some cable um, knit fabric from TFG Fabrics, which looks like this. And this is just the colour I wanted, so I'm really pleased with that. It looks like this. Um, quite a lot of fabric shops seem to have it, and um, it does seem to come in a really huge colour range. That's brilliant. And I've used it before, so that's why I knew it was a bit of a compromise, because is not a sweater knit as in um, that cable pattern isn't knitted into it it's more like a sweatshirt fabric um, and it's wonderfully wonderfully soft on the outside I mean it really is nice and snugly but the inside not so much and it's not that the inside is horrible as such um, it just 
you know, it's a poly viscose mix and that's when you kind of, yeah, you feel it. It just isn't, the contrast between the inner and the, or the wrong side and the right side is huge. Um, let me see if, I don't know whether you'll be able to kind of see, but that's the wrong side. And it just isn't as soft and as lovely as the outside. If the inside felt as nice as the outside, um, it would be absolutely perfect. So that's why it was a bit of a compromise, but you know, I don't know about you, but I certainly nine times out of 10 when I'm wearing a jumper, I have got something underneath it, even if it's just a little camisole top. So I thought, right, it will give me the effect I want. Um, and I am really pleased with how the colors work. I do think it goes quite well with my hair, um, cause not all colors do. But I did hit a bit of a problem with it, and that is that it sewed up very differently to the faux angora. Um, I used the same pattern, the same size, but this has come out as a much tighter fitting um, sweater. <laughs> uh, it's just how the fabric has behaved. Uh, obviously, this is still a stretch fabric. But I've noticed, and I have to admit, I've only noticed it since I made it up, that it seems to have more stretch this way, uh, which is the direction that the cables are running in, and obviously that's the way you want it, than it has width-wise. And I guess really, um, in the jumper, you want the stretch, the greater amount of stretch to go across the body. Um, so the upshot is that it's really tight. Um, I tried it on with my brown jeans and I think actually it does work well with the brown jeans. I also tried it on with some cream coloured lander pants that I made a little while ago that I've been wearing a bit recently. And um, I think the purple looks really good with that off-white colour as well. So as colour combinations, I'm really happy. It's just too tight. I feel it looks sprayed on. So I do feel it's a shame because I really like the jumper. I really like the colour. I can get over the uh, wrong side of the fabric hoo-ha because I'll just wear something underneath it. But it's just too tight and I can't see me wearing it at the moment without feeling very aware of myself. And don't be fooled, these photographs that I've just put up, I was seriously holding in my breath. And so, because you would, wouldn't you? Um, so yeah, you can't walk around your daily life sucking everything in all the time. Uh, it's gonna have to get put onto the pile to one side and um, either it'll get turned into something else or I don't know, but for the time being, I'm afraid it's a fail. As soon as the jumper was finished, I needed to have a think about what I'm gonna wear to this meal that I've got coming up. And I settled on uh, my age old <laughs> favorite of midi dress and boots. So I had a good look, I, I don't know about anyone else, but I tend to save uh, reference pictures and things on Pinterest. And um, sometimes I do screenshots and I've got an, an Evernote page that I put everything into. So I had a good old look and I settled on a pattern from a company called French Poetry, which is the Luna dress. I really like this dress because um, I like the neckline on it and the bust, uh, gathers on you know they are darts of course but they're, they're gathers um it's quite versatile it comes as sleeved and sleeveless and i think there's a tie shoulder option and two different skirt lengths so i like the shape of it you know all fitted at the top and then sort of draping away from the waist and um also able to hide the expanding stomach if you go for a big meal um but Given that it was that fitted, I thought it definitely had to be one that I would twirl. I don't normally have uh, too many problems with anything fitted around the bodice because I'm not someone that's ever had to do a full bust adjustment or anything like that. Um, but nonetheless, time for a twirl. And I used some fabric that I had bought, thank, thanks very much to uh, JJ, who is the Camden Stitch, because she... <laughs> Uh, very kindly sent me a message after I was raving about how fabulous viscose twill is to work with to tell me that Pound Fabrics had some in and they are cheap as chips over there 
Um, and so I ordered a load from there, which I think considering that she's got her own fabric store is, um, yeah, either bonkers or very kind or maybe a bit of both. But anyway, yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, so I'd ordered quite a few different colours and there was a print and I wasn't 100% sure that this print was very me. But as I said, it, it, although you have a minimum of three metres, you have to buy from Pound Fabrics. It was very cheap and I thought, well, I could always use it for a 12. So that's what I did. And this is the print. I think being black and red, it appealed to uh, the teenage goth that I was many, many moons ago. Um, and it is actually, I mean, I think it's something like three pounds a metre. Um, it's really nice fabric. It, I mean, obviously, it's not the same quality as the Atelier Brunette one that I used previously. But then, you know, there's a huge price difference, so you wouldn't expect it to be, would you? Um, so, I made up the dress and when it came to the neckline, so that neckline is quite wide open. Um, and when it came to the neckline, the instruction said to either cut some strips of organza and sew them in seam allowance or to use some iron-on um, violin or something like that. I do have some iron-on kind of tape. So I did that. Now the instructions do say to iron it on, to put it on in the seam allowance. I've had a little look at the instructions again today and actually when you look at the drawing of they've done the drawing of the organza it sort of straddles the seam allowance which is of course what I would normally do but I remember when I was doing it thinking to myself normally this should go across where the seam is going to form not just in the seam allowance but I thought well maybe I'm missing something here Maybe it's a technique that worked really well and I don't know about it, so just follow the instructions. So when I go on to tell you that the neck was all stretched out, you could uh, argue it was my fault for not looking at the diagram, but the written instructions are say in the seam allowance. So, you know, I should have known better. But needless to say, when I came to try it on, the neckline was all baggy and gaping. Um, so I fitted it and realised that I could salvage it by bringing up the um, shoulder seams. So I did that, brought up the shoulder seams, pinned them, um, sewed them together, tried it on very quickly. It was like, yeah, okay, that's okay. And then I attached the arms and I left it to hang because it's very long. I was pretty disappointed the next day when I tried it on. I mean, at first glance, the shoulders are a bit, the uh, sleeves are a bit off. I, I need to kind of come up a bit on the shoulder. They kind of seem starting about here. But frankly, that's irrelevant. Um, it looks, I think the word is dreadful. I think it's partly because I've basically ruined the neckline. Instead of that lovely open, uh, v neckline I now got a slightly higher neck which looks a bit I don't know do I want to use the word frumpy I just feel like men don't get described as frumpy old-fashioned so we say old-fashioned um, and the long sleeves and the drape of the skirt and the length of it I just thought I look like I'm and the print the whole combination the print included I thought I look like I'm at some kind of this is my costume for some kind of medieval reenactment. I was feeling really disappointed about it. And my daughter came home from school and came down to the sofa to have a chat with me. And I was telling her about it. And she said, and this was the kiss of death. She said, oh, um, in our drama production, we're looking for a costume for Mary, Queen of Scots. That would be perfect. I thought, okay. Clearly, this is a perfect costume for Mary, Queen of Scots. What it is not is the really nice, slightly edgy, you know, midi dress to be worn in 2020. So I've abandoned it. I will take some photographs of it uh, as it is, because I'm not going to hem it and I'm not going to adjust the sleeves because 
Actually, frankly, I genuinely may give it to my daughter's school for any future productions if they're doing anything. I didn't even go back and think, right, revisit it, do the neckline properly because that's part, that's pretty much what's ruined it. It's, it's the kiss of death now. I've now decided that it's not going to work. I think, actually, having looked at it, it might work better a lot shorter if I, you know, like almost knee length or above the knee, but I don't know that that's me. I don't know that I'm that comfortable in very, in short skirt. I mean, not very, because it's not mini, but in shorter dresses. So I genuinely think I'm going to donate it for school productions. So I do still now have to make a dress. Um, well, I don't have to, do I? I mean, I could use something I've already got. I could even, God forbid, buy one. Um, but I am halfway through making a dress that I think um, is going to work, but I haven't finished it yet. So I will hopefully get that finished soon and show you next time. And let's hope that that's the end of my run of bad luck and it will look really good and I will actually wear it because we're talking about a cape that I'm not going to wear, a sweater I'm not going to wear and a dress I'm not going to wear. This is not good is it? It means it's time for me to go and um, thank you very much. I will see you soon and wish me luck. Bye. I'll do the subscribe stuff as well. I always forget that. All right, bye.